pronunciation is key for speaking with confidence and with freedom, and it really helps with boosting your clarity. Now, one more thing I did not do is this. Hold on. I think the audio might be better now. On Instagram, let me know if you can hear me well or better. Now, if you are joining now, know that also next week on Tuesday, I'm going to um, host a free masterclass. And in the masterclass, I'm going to share with you the three steps to make your pronunciation simple and clear because I really do believe that it's important. Like I said, it's really not about how people hear you or understand you. It's really, okay, can't hear it all. Okay, sorry about that. There we go. Now it's better. Um, so guys on YouTube, so I'm going live on my phone and on my camera here, streaming to YouTube and Facebook. So I apologize about that. Now I think you can hear me. Don't worry, I got you. Okay, so let's get started with a few pronunciation tips or in general, how do you learn a new sound? Okay, so when the purpose of today's training is to really help you hear the difference between confusing vowel pairs, because if you can't hear it, you can't make it, okay? And this is something that I need you to remember. If you can't hear it, you can't make it. So even if today is going to be a little difficult for you to understand, it's still really important that you just pay attention so that you can hear the difference because that is going to improve your comprehension in English, okay? Um, good, I can see everyone, I can hear you, I can see your comments. If you have any questions for me, just write it in the chat or under the comments tab so I can um, respond to the questions at the end. You can ask me also throughout the session. And just to give you an update about what to expect this week. So today we're gonna talk about sounds and specifically confusing vowel pairs. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about intonation, rhythm, and stress. We're going to talk about intonation, pitch, uh, rhythm, and why it is so important and how you can learn and practice your intonation. In English, I call it prosody. Prosody is everything about the speech that is not the single sounds. It's not pronunciation. So we're going to talk about prosody. On day four, I'm going to teach you some pronunciation hacks. So quick fixes and tricks that it took me years to learn or to understand through listening and learning. And I'm going to share that with you on day four. And on day five, I'm going to do live coaching on Instagram. So I'm only going to go live on Instagram, not on YouTube or Facebook, but uh, you will be able to join me and ask to be coached by me. And then I will invite you to come live. Of course, I won't be able to work with everyone, but with a few of you, and you will get to see me coach others on their pronunciation. Okay, good. Now, again, if you want to join my live class, it's absolutely free. It's next Tuesday. I, I host two classes. If you can't make it at the times that you see there, just so you know that afterwards you will get a recording. So I recommend that you sign up anyway. In the live class, I'm going to teach you three steps that are going to make your pronunciation simple and clear. So if you're all about pronunciation, then you are going to love it. Let's begin with a sheep ship vowel pair. Now, when I teach sounds, I want you to understand a few things. First of all, especially vowels. First of all, Vowels are produced inside the mouth with your articulation organs, lips, teeth, tongue, palate, jaw, right? All of these organs affect how you pronounce a sound. Now, specifically with vowels, what matters here is the movement of the tongue and the opening of the jaw. So I'm going to say it again. When we talk about vowels, what we want to take into consideration is the movement of the tongue, the height of the tongue, right? Whether it's high or low, where it's, whether it's rolled forward or backwards, right? High in the front or high in the back, and whether or not your mouth is closed, E, or open, A, ah, closed, Ooh, or open, ah. 
And one more element that we want to pay attention to is the lips. What do my lips do? Do I pull them to the sides? E, or do I push them forward? Ooh, uh, ah, oh. All of that matters. And sometimes it's really the slightest shift that changes the word completely. And for people who don't have all the vowels that English has in their first language, might find it confusing because their tongue is going to want to automatically go to the natural places that you have in your first language. For example, if you are a Spanish speaker, I'm learning Spanish now, I think I, I said that like a thousand times before, there are only five vowel sounds. And that's the case for a lot of other languages. A, E, I, O, U, right? Five vowel sounds. In American English, and it depends on the dialect, but there are about 16 vowels, 16. And also pay, pay, keep in mind that those 16 vowels are represented by the same five vowel letters. This is why English cannot be a phonetic language, right? Because the letter A will represent several different sounds and not just one sound because there are 16 vowels and five vowel letters. So people who have less vowels than what English has, and if your target language is English, then what might happen is that your tongue is going to go automatically to the closest vowel sound that exists in your language. Okay? So let me, let me just check really quickly what's going on here with my microphone. Okay, so I have another mic here. Um, so now that you know that there are 16 vowels, I want you to think about how many vowel sounds exist in your language and put it in the comments, put it in the comments and tell me your language. So if you're a Spanish speaker, write Spanish and five vowels, I already told you that. If you are um, an Italian speaker, you might, I think you have eight vowel sounds. Okay, so write it down. And also don't be confused with the letters that you have in the alphabet. It does not represent the sounds. Sometimes there are more sounds than the letter in the alphabet. Okay, so yes, don't forget to write your language if you say five. Okay, so if you have less than 16, then you will find it challenging to even perceive similar vowel sounds like sheep, ship. So if you have five, six, seven, even eight vowel sounds in your first language, you probably only have one E sound, right? And that E is somewhere between the tense E of American English and the lax I, I of English. So it's not sheep and sheep, but it's sheep and ship. So one is a bit more exaggerated. We pull the lips to the sides a bit and the tongue rolls forward. E, 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 E. And then you lower the tongue a little bit, drop the jaw. Remember, I told you it's all about small nuances. E, roll the tongue forward. It's really the same position of the tongue as the Y sound. Okay, so just say for a second with me the word yes. Yes, you feel the tongue pushing against the upper palate. That's the position for the E sound as well, as in C. Let's practice a few more words. We, teach, reason, complete, feed, leave, E, 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 E. Okay, so it, it's also a little longer. Okay, it's a little longer. Usually it's like double the length than a neutral E sound that you might have in your language. Okay, so that's the tense E sound. Now the laxed, and usually it's spelled with two vowel letters, E, 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 A, I, E, E, I. Okay, so that is another indication. Not always, sometimes, for example, in the word visa, the tense E is represented by the letter I, but usually you see two vowel letters or you have the silent E like in the word machine. Now, the laxed I 
is somewhere between E and E. For those of you who have five, six, seven vowel letters, you probably have an E sound and an E sound. So here it's somewhere in the middle. It's, it's like you want to re relax your tongue a little bit, okay? Relax your jaw a little bit. Keep one space, like a space of, of about one finger between the top and bottom teeth. Relax the jaw. It's a really relaxed sound. Relax the root of the tongue. Everything here needs to be relaxed. So do this with me. Relax everything. And now go from E to E. E. It's not E. E. Sit. Kid. Limit. Fish. Fish and chips. Risk. Picture. Simple. Position. I, 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 I. Can you hear it? E, I. E, I. Reach, rich. Reach, rich. Can you hear the, a difference between the two? First of all, tell me if you can hear a difference between the two. Put yes in the comments if you can hear a difference. So that's the first question. And the second question is, so write yes or no, if you got it. And the second question, are you able to make this distinction between the tense E and lax E? So here, put one if you are able to make that distinction and two if you can't. So if you can hear it and make a distinction, put yes and one. Okay, good, you can hear the difference, good. A lot of yeses, good. And how about making? pronouncing it differently. Put one if you're able to make a distinction when you pronounce them, and two if you cannot just yet. Okay, good, yes and one, yes and one, good for you. Okay, good. Are you able to make the distinction between the tense E and lax E? Reach, rich. Let's look at another vowel pair, L another, another word pair, least, List. Okay, so for those of you who put two, because we have a few with two, pull, remember, if you have a neutral E sound in your language, it's really similar. Just extend it a bit, pull the lips to the sides, or just think of making a Y sound. Let's do it together. E, yes, E, peach. Now, I'm assuming that this is easier for you to pronounce. So now let's focus on the other one. Imagine like you have a cogwheel here, like you could, like you want to, or a little knob that you move. And as you move it, you kind of like lower the tongue like this. And really visualize it because you can't control those muscles just yet because you're not used to it and it's fine. When you do uh, more deliberate pronunciation training, you will be able to do it. But for now, just think about it. You, you can absolutely control your tongue. So lower the tongue a little bit. E, okay, so it's not E, E. And sometimes just relaxing the jaw or opening the mouth or just thinking as if you're about to make an E sound. E, E, fit. Now just repeat after me, even if there are people around, don't worry about it, close the door. Just repeat after me and try to get, like close your eyes if you need to, kid. Pitch, risk, limit, finish, not finish, 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 rich, i, 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 fit, 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 mm, business, I blacked out, it's like no words are coming, business, two i sounds, image, Okay, when you repeat it again and again and again, it's easier to pronounce. Now let's compare sheep, ship, reach, rich, least, list, beat, bit. Is it better? Is it better for you to pronounce it? Let me know. Okay, um, the beat in this song is a bit slow. Let's practice this. The beat in this song is a bit slow. Let's distinguish between the two one more time. The beat in this song is a bit slow. Beat, bit. 
beat, bit. Good, I see a lot of yeses. The next word, at least I was on the list. Sometimes it's good to be on the list. Sometimes it's not good to be on the list, depending on what list that is. But at least I was on the list. At least I was on the list. Be bit, least list. One more. The computer chip is really cheap. The computer chip is really cheap. Cheap chip. Okay. Can you think of more pairs? If you can, write them down in the comments. More pairs of the vowel pair, the tense E and the lax E. For those of you who just joined, then welcome. Today we are going to uh, practice pronunciation. I'm going to teach you some of the most confusing vowel pairs and also a few consonants, okay? And I'm doing that as part of my five-day pronunciation training to help you understand how pronunciation can help you improve your fluency, transform your English, build confidence, and really improve everything about your English. It's not just about your accent. It really is about delivering a clear message. So being clear and understanding sounds and optimizing your pronunciation, which by the way, is something that we're gonna talk about in the free class next week, um, my, my live class. Um, optimizing your speech is going to really, really help you feel more at ease create that sense of effortlessness in your speech so that you don't feel tired. There are several reasons. Do you tend to get tired when you speak in English? Let's say when you practice or when you um, speak at work or speak with someone, do you feel more tired? Put yes in the comments if that's the case for you. Do you feel more tired um, after speaking in English than speaking in your first language? Let me know. And if the answer is yes, then you should definitely get, grab your free seat. Never. Okay, good. Never is good. Some yeses. Yes, a lot. Yes, a lot of yeses. Okay. So most of you, if you're not, if you don't feel tired after speaking in English, that's amazing. You're probably using optimal speech. You're not straining your muscles, and that is great. But there are reasons for why we feel more tired after speaking in English. And I'm going to cover that. We don't have time in the live training, in the five-day live training. But I will cover why that happens and what to do to overcome it. And I'm going to talk about it in the live class. All you need to do is absolutely free. And even if you can't attend the live, um, the live event itself, you can sign up and then get the recording to your inbox. Okay, so just write the word class or if you're on YouTube, um, click on the link in the description. Let's talk about another vowel pair and that is the bed, bad, bed, bad, bed, bad. First of all, can you hear a difference? Bed, bad. And if you, you can check out the comments if you're on Instagram and I think on YouTube too. And you can see Christina from my team. She usually asks, the questions that I ask. So if you're lost, look for her comments. So bed, bad, can you hear a difference? Because like I said, first you need to hear a difference, then you need to be able to make it. But first things first. Okay, no sound, can you hear me? Okay, if you can't hear me, then it's probably your speaker. The, the bed vowel sound is like a neutral S sound in many languages. In English, it's a bit more open. Bed, read, head, said, I said something yesterday in class, said, that's an S sound. And then a, a, a is a bit more open. The A sound is usually associated with the letter E. The a sound is usually associated with a letter A. So if you see a word spelled with A, okay, like let's say happy, and you pronounce it with A, happy, you're probably not opening your mouth enough and your tongue is not in the right position. So for the A, because it needs to be A, ah, happy, A, the tongue is somewhat here, and then A, ah, this part becomes flat, Ah, the back of the tongue is a little higher, lips pulled to the sides a bit. 
We want to make sure that you're not investing too much energy here. Ah, bad, sad, happy, cat, ah, apple. Imagine like you're taking a bite off of an apple. Ah, ah, apple. It's not apple. It's not a neutral ah sound. It's not e pole. It's apple. Head, had. Bed, bad. Said, sad. Left, laughed. Left, laughed. Let's practice a few phrases. He said he wasn't sad. Let's hear a distinction. Can you hear a difference when you are saying the sentence between the word said and sad? Put yes in the comments if you can. He said he wasn't sad. He said he wasn't sad. He said he wasn't sad. Okay, good, you can hear a difference. Good for you, well done. Another sentence, I guess we should get more gas. Can you hear a difference? Can you make the difference? I guess we should get more gas. I guess we should get more gas. Eh, ah, good. All right, a lot of yeses. One more, one more, one more. Dad, all the flowers are dead. Dad, dead. Okay, not dad, dad, dead. Dad, all the flowers are dead. Dad, all the flowers are dead. Good. Now, if we are talking about the a eh sound, I'm going to challenge you with another pair that goes along with the a eh sound that could be confusing. Can you guess which one I'm talking about? What other vowel sounds do we have in English that is very similar to the a eh sound? I'm gonna give you a word that might be a good, might be a clue. So if we take the word, okay, I'm taking a different word. If we take the word bet, so we have bet and we have bat. People tend to confuse those two words, bet, bat, and they might say bet for both. There is another word, a different word with a different vowel that might be pronounced as bet. I bet you can guess which word I'm talking about. Bet. So what am I talking about? Okay, bit, especially if you're an Arabic speaker, because there isn't a distinction between e and e, so absolutely, bit and bet. And there's another one. Let's see if you can guess it. Not bat, because I did talk about it. Yes, bat, but not this one. So we said bit could be. Bet and bit could be a, a, a confusing pair. And there is another one. No one has guessed it. When I tell you that, you're going to be like, oh, of course. Okay. Bait. Bait. The A sound. The A as in day is often reduced to E and pronounced as E, so bait might be pronounced as bait. Okay, not fully pronouncing the A sound. So we want to make that distinction, especially in the word pair sell versus sale. Can you hear the difference? Sometimes people pronounce them the same, especially if diphthongs changing vowels are not something that you have in your first language. Let's practice it. Sell, sale. Indeed, that was a bait. <laughs> okay, bite. Yeah, but bite, you wouldn't confuse it with bet usually, right? Because it already feels like an I sound. You would go towards a different direction in the on the vowel chart. Okay, so bet, bait, sell, sale, best, based. 
His best movie was based on a book. I'm looking at my notes, I can't remember everything. His best movie was based on a book. His best movie was based, even though it's spelled with a D, it's pronounced as a T, okay? I, I don't know if you know this, but the ED suffix is often pronounced as a T um, when it appears after a voiceless consonant, like here, after the S, based. And get and gate, 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 gate. Uh, call me when you get to the gate. Call me when you get to the gate. I love the rhythm of English. You can play with it. And I want you to be playful in this practice. And also tomorrow, tomorrow we're gonna talk about rhythm and about intonation. We're definitely gonna have fun. Okay, one last vowel pair, and then we're gonna go into consonants. The next vowel pair that I wanna talk about today is the pull-pull vowel pair. Pool versus pull. So for those of you who just joined me, because I see that people are coming and going, this is a five-day pronunciation training. Today we're talking about sounds because I want to help you simplify the pronunciation of sounds and see how pronunciation can truly help you build fluency and confidence and effortlessness and ease. And if you want to go a little deeper and get my three steps to help you make your English pronunciation simple and clear, we're going to talk about why you feel tired and how to be consistent with the sounds that you learn and why you might not feel authentic. So all of that is going to be discussed in the class. If you're watching this on Instagram, just write the word class and you're going to get a link to sign up. And if you're watching this on Facebook, same. And um, on YouTube, just click on the link and grab your seat. It's absolutely free. Even if you can't attend the hours that are there, you can sign up and then you're going to um, get the recording afterwards. But I do encourage you to sign up for free because those who sign up for, uh, for my live class live, they will also get my complete tongue twister guide. Um, so we created a guide of tongue twisters, which is a fantastic way to practice pronunciation. It helps you organize your sounds and the words and your tongue, like it connects everything together and it's organized according to challenge and sounds. If you show up live, you will be able to download it for free. So make sure you grab your seat and show up live. Let's talk about the pool-pull vowel pair. The pool-pull vowel pair, I call it the cousins of the sheep-ship vowel pair. Why? Because the sheep ship is a vowel pair that is produced in the front of the mouth. The voice resonates in the front, the tongue rolls forward, it's high, and it rolls forward, e, e. The back vowels, pull, pull, are the same, but only the, for, for those vowels, the tongue pulls back, okay? pulls back and not forward, but it's still pretty high. Ooh, that's the tense ooh. So you might already have the ooh in your language. Um, if you're a Japanese speaker, you also have it. You just don't round your lips for it. In English, you definitely want to round your lips. Ooh, foo, ooh, 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 food, you, two, two, room. Who do? Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's usually a longer sound, just like the tense e is. E, oo. Okay, so it's a longer vowel sound. Usually we kind of like double it up if you're used to shorter vowels. And then we have the tense oo, usually spelled with the letter u, double o, one o. And then we have also the lax o, uh, which is a sound that is usually a little, I don't want to say challenging, but it's it's it doesn't exist in a lot of languages. So pay close attention to how I pronounce it. Cook, book, push. So it's not cook, look, push, but cook, cook. So from the tense oo, Food, I drop the jaw, again, that tense and relaxed pair, right? E, I, tense, relaxed, U, uh, 
It's kind of like you let go of tension. Make sure that there is no tension here at the root of the tongue. Book, push, look, cook, cookie, sugar, not sugar, but sh. So it's a different sound. It's a different category. And I always like to give the imagery of, you know, how kids have this toy of, you know, like the, it's like a plastic toy with pegs and in different shapes, like a triangle and a square and a circle that you have to put in, in the right place, in the right hole. And you can't put the triangle in a, in, in a square. So the thing about sound, it's pretty much the same. It's kind of like you have the category of the sound and you want to try and fit in your pronunciation. Of course you can, it's not a big deal, deal if you say push instead of push. Not a big deal, especially with the right context. Everyone will understand you. No one would get confused. If you say, I need, I'm so hungry, I need some foot. Well, maybe that was an exaggeration, but I'm so hungry, I need some food and you say it in a short way, no one is going to think that you just said foot. But it's good to know this and it's good to practice because if you are misunderstood or if you feel like there is lack of clarity or if you don't understand something, knowing that there are these two different sounds is really, really important. I'm exploring, <laughs> I'm exploring all the, all the features of Instagram during the slide, okay? So, food, foot, pool, pull, cook, cook. Let's practice a few more with a lax uh. Push, pull, cookie, sugar, hood, car hood, neighborhood, hoodie, hood, hood, hood. Let's look at some examples. We have, hey, Luke, look at me. Two different words, tense, ooh, Luke, and then look, Luke, look. Hey, Luke, look at me, drinking my water. Do we have a Luke in the house? <coughs> if we do, let me know in the comments. Hey, Luke, look at me, not Luke, Luke but Luke, look. Let's look at another one. Um, this fool is so full of himself. This fool is so full of himself. Fool, full. Fool, full. Fool, full. This fool is so full of himself. Good. Good, 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 good. All right, any questions so far about the vowel pairs that we talked about before we move into consonants? There are more, oh, you're asking? Okay, there's a question here about full and foil. Foil is a diphthong, oi, oi, oi. So here we actually round the lips for an o sound, foi, foi, foi. And, and the word full, I'm full of it, or I'm totally full. I don't want any more food. Full, it's somewhere between u, o, and a. Full, full. Okay, good. What else do we want to talk about? What's the difference between look and see? Maybe I'll talk about it at the end when we switch to vocabulary. Pool, pull, can you please? Okay, someone asked for the difference between ice and eyes. If, like, so here it's another consonant pair that helps me distinguish between those two words. So the word ice, can I get some ice in my water? Ice has the I diphthong and then an S sound, ice. Eyes, my eyes begin the same way, I, Z. The Z sound is the pair of the S, is the consonant pair of the S. Only the Z is voiced, so we activate the vocal cords, Z, 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 versus S, S, S. That's the main distinction. Ice, eyes, ice, 
eyes. If you have any more questions, write them either in the chat or in the questions tab if you're on Instagram, okay? So at the end, I'm gonna go back and um, answer your pronunciation questions. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the TH sound. The TH sound is easy for some, challenging for others. It really depends on what it's like in your first language. So if in your first language, you have the th and the, Arabic, some Spanish dialects, um, what other languages? There's quite a few languages where you do have the th and th, and then it might not be very challenging for you. The th is usually represented with the th letter, so it's pretty consistent, but there are two different ths. Did you know that? So, for example, there is the th, as in think, voiceless th. So I stick the tongue out, allow air to come out. And if you activate the vocal cords, now make sure that the tongue is really soft and you allow air to pass. That's the secret of the sound. No tension. If the tongue is soft, then the air passes between the tongue and teeth creating this friction sound, they, that's the voiced th, this, them. Now, I know that what we're doing here is just the first stage. I'm not expecting you to take what you've learned today and start using it consistently because it's pretty much impossible. I do talk about it in the live class and what you need to do once you learn how to pronounce it because really that's just the beginning, understanding the difference, and then learning how to pronounce it. But then there is like the real work starts now. And I'm not expecting you to do it, you know, in five minutes and then be able to do it. But what we're doing here is developing awareness. If you want to go deeper and learn how to make it your own and how to be consistent with this new pronunciation, then uh, join the live class that is going to take place next Tuesday. Okay. So think, theory, authentic, path. Not packed and not past. This is where it can get confusing. If you keep the tongue in and you pronounce it as an S and you say pass, people will hear pass. They'll associate it with the word pass, even though you might mean path. Um, some people replace it with an F and then three might come up across as free if you bring the bottom lip to touch the top teeth instead of the tongue. Free, right? We are th free people. If I were to say that, you would assume that I'm saying we are free, with an F, free people. But three is different because you got to stick the tongue out. And this is where pronunciation really matters because, again, it can get in the way of your message. Um, so that's the TH. If you have specific words with TH that you'd like me to pronounce or teach you, then let me know. There is a question about the word there versus there. So it's their coffee and it's the coffee shop is over there. Their coffee shop is over there. What's the difference between them? Tell me in the comments. Between the first there and the second there. Can you hear a difference? Their coffee shop is over there. Okay. Let me know what the difference is. Their coffee shop is over there. There is a delay and I can't continue until I see your responses. Okay, so you need to tell me what is actually the difference between the first there and the other there. And in the meantime, I'm going to, thank you, Avi, no difference at all. There is no difference. They're both pronounced the same. There, there, it's over there, it's their coffee. And even when you want to say they are, they're happy. You can say it in the same way. They're happy, right? So here's a shortcut for you. Okay, R. I promised I'm gonna get through all of those sounds, R. The R is, is, is also, the position of the R in English is also very unique because English has to be special. It's like, I gotta, I gotta do things differently than the rest of the world, right? 
let's use pounds instead of kilos and then it's only American in American English. I get it. Uh, but I do teach American English and there is a difference with the R between American English and British English. If you want me to talk about it, let me know in the comments. So uh, I'm going to talk about the R and then I'm going to talk about the L and then I'm going to answer your questions. The R in American and British English and all the Englishes that are Englishes um, is pronounced by bringing the tongue up. The sides of the tongue touch the sides of the teeth. The tip of the tongue does not touch anything and the lips round. And that's how you pronounce the R at the beginning of words in all dialects. Red, rich, reason. Common challenges is when you add a lot of tension to your mouth or when your tongue touches somewhere. Maybe the back of the tongue, ready. Maybe the front of the tongue, ready. Maybe just a tap, ready. Either way, there should not be any contact, not here and not here in the back. Er, only here. Er, there is a little bit like, I like to think of the tongue as a fist that you're clenching. Er, that's the R sound. And definitely round your lips. Most people I know do not round their lips when pronouncing a word. So then it looks like this, red, right, really, right? And it doesn't have the edge or the depth of the sound. Listen to the difference. Red, right. I really increase the quality of the sound simply by rounding my lips. Why? Think of it like an instrument. And if you're not rounding your, your lips, you have less place for resonance. Red, 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 red. Okay? So, round your lips, my friends. Red, really, result. In American English, you also pronounce R's after a vowel, no matter what. Care, where. The vowel is more important than the R, so make sure that you hold it out. Steer, fear, for. Okay? It's not fur, it's not fear, it's fear and for. We pronounce the vowel fully, but then we bring the tongue up for the R. It's a rhotic dialect. You hear the R at the end. This is the case in American English, for example. But in British English, and that's the difference in the pronunciation of the R between dialects, in um, most of the dialects in England, for example, or British dialects, the R is not pronounced. You actually pronounce it like a schwa. It's like a neutral vowel sound. So instead of care, you would hear care, care. Instead of first, where the R is pronounced, you'll hear first. Instead of for, you'll hear full, right? So you just hear the vowel, the tongue doesn't come up for the R. That's the main difference, but when you produce the sound itself, it's the same, and you can hear it at the beginning of words. Okay. My problem is that I get lazy when I'm having a conversation. Um, you know, there's a lot to juggle when you're having a conversation in second language. And just like any type of sports, um, to get better at something and to start enjoying it and to be in shape, you got to do more of that something, right? So I would assume that you just don't tend to have a lot of conversations in English. Right? So that is one reason. Another reason might be because you're investing a lot of energy and that makes you tired, so you avoid, which is something that I also see. And I'm going to talk about it in the live class. If you joined me recently, there is a live class that I'm hosting about three steps to make your English clear and simple English pronunciation. And I do talk about why we feel tired, and I'm going to give you some practical tools on how to improve that. So save your seat. Um, the link is either in the description or you can just write the word class if you're on Instagram or Facebook. Okay, so, so 
it's easy to say, oh, I get lazy, but also how is that serving you? You know, when you think of yourself that you're lazy, you're probably not lazy. It's probably challenging and you need to juggle a lot of things. And a lot of times when we feel overwhelmed or confused, then we tend to avoid or shut down or decide to leave early or stop speaking. And this is where I want you to start noticing this type of behavior because it's really our thinking that affects situations and how we show up, how we practice and how we speak. Okay, let's talk about the L sound. Did you know, how many L's do we have in English? Let me know in the chat. Because I want to talk about the L and then I'm going to answer questions. So how many L's do we have in English? In the meantime, I'm going to answer some questions. For example, the difference between water and weather. Okay, so this is easy because first, the word water has a T, but it's a flat T. Wa -da -da -da. So it sounds like a very light D sound or like an, a very short R sound, if you have that in your language. Water, water, and then you have the R. The word weather is an E sound, not A. Ah. Water, weather, th, the, weather. Okay, so we have four, two, how many L's we have in English? 18, kidding, no one said 18. Um, so for the, some wrote three, some wrote one. So we have one letter, the L, we have two L sounds. We have the light L and the dark L. The light L is how you would usually think of an L. The tip of the tongue goes up, L, lemon, and it appears before a vowel or at the beginning of words. Lemon, listen, list, play, tip of the tongue goes up. Now, for some of you, your L might be very, very light, like la, 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 right? Lemon, perfectly fine. It doesn't affect the clarity, but I want you to notice that in English, the L is a little heavier. L, it's a little bit more tension here. Lemon, it's not dark yet. It's still a light L, but it's a little heavier. Play, allow. The dark L appears at the end of words or before a consonant, and it really doesn't sound like an L. We perceive it as an L because we know the word and we know the spelling. But if you were to hear it in isolation, or if you were to hear it in a word that doesn't have the L, and let's say you're not that experienced in English, then you might not recognize it as an L because it's really all, all, right? It sounds like an OO or an, a W sound, all. That's the dark L. You create tension here. You bring the back of the tongue up as if you're about to pronounce a W sound. Wuh, oh. I always like to think of it as when I was a kid in kindergarten, I remember it, maybe because it was traumatic or something, but like I remember that we would always play dead at some point in recess. We had a break, we would go out, and at some point, everyone had to die. And I was super dramatic. And every time I had to die, and for some reason, I really enjoyed the part. So I would do it really early on during in the break. And then I would have to just lay there for the rest of the break while everyone else was playing, pretending to be dead. Okay. But when I would play dead, I would go like this. Oh, 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 oh. Right. And when you do that, oh, oh, then you actually push the back of the tongue down and that's what you do for the dark L. Oh, well, feel, tell, help, alternative, even if it's in the middle, middle of the word, because there is a T right after, so it's still a dark L, even in the word always, okay? Because there is a W right after. Pale, sell, sell. So it's not sell, sell, but sell, sell, 
sell. Okay? So that's the difference between the light L, la 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 la, and dark L, all. Okay? Good. What's the difference between have to, got to? Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably pick pronunciation questions today just because otherwise we will, you know, I want to keep it in pronunciation. So I apologize um, if I don't answer all of them. Yeah. So someone was asking Matt uh, as in almost. Yes. So in almost, we barely hear the L, right? It's not, but it, it's also there because I'm not saying almost, almost. I don't drop it, but it's also not almost, almost. It's almost almost all 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 now you don't even have to raise the tip of the tongue for it almost almost okay questions literally let's talk about the word literally we have a light l at the beginning li and i'm giving you the american the more common pronunciation in american english there are two, like several ways to pronounce this word. I'm gonna give you one. Lita, Lita. That's a flat T, so it's like a really, really light D. Lita, R, an R sound and a schwa, reduced vowel sound. Literally, literally, literally. Good. What's the difference between leave and live? So that's the tense E, lax I. Vowel pair, e, i, tense e, longer, pull the lips. If you haven't seen it, I explained this vowel pair in the beginning. If you joined later, then you can watch the replay after. Leave, li, i, 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 live. Peach pitch. Castle, why don't we uh, pronounce the T? So um, the T does is not always pronounced. Um, in different situations, specifically in castle, it is not pronounced. So you can just ignore it. Why? That's how it is. Um, sometimes you will pronounce a T before an L, like little or Seattle. So it's not a rule that I want you to remember. Um, another case when where we might not pronounce a T is when it's after an N in unstressed syllables. For example, internet, wanted, 20. It's not a mistake, and a lot of people will pronounce a T in these situations, also depending on the dialect. So remember, everything that I'm telling you here, you might find proof that it's slightly different. You might hear someone else who is pronouncing it slightly differently. English is very varied. I teach general American, and I also have like a slight East Coast dialect because I've lived in New York for five years. So sometimes my, my sounds are a little bit more rounded in certain situations. But I teach general American. However, you will hear different pronunciations um, of different words and sounds depending on the dialect. So I was talking about wanted. Sometimes you will hear the T. And sometimes when people speak, especially when people speak fast, they might drop it. Wanted, 20, internet, counter, international, documentary. But it's not a mistake to say documentary or documentary or internet, interview, perfectly fine. But if you drop it and it feels okay and even easier for you to pronounce, I'm all about shortcuts. Take the shortcut, drop the sound. If it doesn't feel natural and if you need to practice it, don't drop the sound. Clarity over accuracy, okay? And also accuracy is really like, it depends on the speaker, right? Or it depends on the listener. Because what's accurate for one person is not necessarily what's accurate for another person. No one owns English or the different dialects or, or the different sounds. Often. Often is another word that technically should not have a T, but a lot of people pronounce it with a T. So you can either say often or often. Both are correct. Okay. In American English, the ah sound is going to be a bit more open. Not o, oh, but ah, often. Drop it, guys. Just drop it. Okay. Um, I like your nose. Such a, that's the first. That's the first. Okay. 
Mountain. Let's talk about the word mountain. Mountain is another for is another T that is pronounced in a certain way. The T is such an interesting sound. I love the T because the T changes according to the position of, in the word. For example, the T at the beginning of word is aspirated. So it sounds like time, tell, tick, atomic. The T at the end of the word is basically pronounced cat, um, hat, get. Okay, I don't even pop it. I can, it's not a big deal. The T after an N drops, internet. Um, and then we have the T, T before an R, sounds like a ch sound, train, trust, country. Can you hear it? Country. And then when the T appears before, a schwa n, a reduced vowel and an n. So it starts a very, a, an unstressed syllable that ends with an n. For example, kitten, forgotten, important, mountain, Manhattan, T, reduced vowel and an n. And the reduced vowel could be represented with any vowel letter, really, so you can't tell by the spelling. Then what happens is kind of like you release the, the T through the nose, okay? So to pronounce the T, you bring the tongue up, and then you release it for like a regular T. T, T, T. So you block the air, and then you release it. T. Try it. T. Star. You can feel it in the word star. It's not aspirated. When there is an N right after, so you bring the tongue up, but instead of releasing the air here through your mouth, you kind of like block the air in the mouth, but the air wants to come out. So it's gonna come out through the nose. Kitten. So basically you open the passage for the air to come out through the nose. It's like when you sneeze, right? I'm really good at faking sneezes. Do you wanna, do you wanna hear me sneeze? Okay. Let me know. Put yes if you want to hear me do a fake sneeze. But for now, hmm, hmm, kitten. Now, don't worry. There's an easy way, easier way to pronounce it for some people. But listen, kitten, kitten, forgotten, mountain, mound. Keep the tongue up. Release air through the nose. Hmm, mountain. Now, that's one way to pronounce this word. Another way is with a glottal stop. A glottal stop is when you stop the air in the vocal box, okay, here. And you usually hear it when you start a word with a vowel, like uh, 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 that, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a glottal stop. In British English, there is a dialect where it's really, really distinct. Like if you say, I want wa, wa, I didn't say water, I said wa, I use the glottal stop instead. So you can use a glottal stop for mountain, okay? So instead of releasing it through the nose, mountain, that was through the nose, you can use a glottal stop. Mau, mm, mountain, moun, mm. So you basically say moun, you keep the tongue up, and then you just say mm, mountain, mountain, mountain. So that mm sound is perceived as the T because that's how people pronounce it in American English. It's not a mistake to say mountain. Perfectly fine, clear. Guys, clarity over accuracy. But if you're at a level that you want to try out new things in your mouth, let's practice it together. Mountain, Manhattan. Manhattan, but you have to say it quickly, right? Because if you say Manhattan, then it doesn't work as well. It has to be within the flow. Manhattan, Manhattan, kitten, I'm kitten, and kitten. Well, the difference is the voice. A kitten, I won't use my voice. Kitten, kitten, and for I'm kitten, I also wouldn't say that. I'm, I'm probably gonna say I'm kidding like a flap D. Someone was asking about kitten. 
versus kidding. I'm kidding. I have a kitten. No, I'm kidding. Um, but the D could also be pronounced like that. For example, for in the word student, student, right? I'm doing the same thing, but my vocal cords are vibrating. And that's the difference between the, the, the nasal T and the nasal D. Okay, so here's how I sneeze. <laughs> no, that was not good. Okay, let's do it again. <clears throat> that was a fake sneeze. See, I'm really good, right? Like, how would you rate it on a scale of one to 10? Did, was it believable? One is like, Hadar, that was totally fake. And 10 was, I thought you sneezed. No, I was, I was faking it. Someone just said, bless you. Okay, it was a fake sneeze. So I'm gonna teach you the secret. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> those acting skills paid off. So it's it's kind of like you, first of all, you have to fake it at the beginning. And then it's like a ch sound <clears throat> or <clears throat> like you're releasing it like the nasal T, right? So this is another really good reason for why you should practice pronunciation because then you can fake sneeze. And, you know, it's like great for parties, for lives. It's really good. <coughs> okay. Um, that's it for today, you guys. Tomorrow we're going to talk about intonation, rhythm, and stress. We're going to talk about pitch, what pitch is. We're going to talk about why the rhythm of words is different um, depending on what word you're using. Why sometimes we reduce words and sometimes we prolong words like I just did now. And uh, we're going to talk about how to practice intonation and rhythm in English. Now, if you just joined, then too bad for you because we just finished, but it's going to be saved on my Instagram account and YouTube channel and Facebook page. And also, I'm gonna join live tomorrow at the same time, minus one hour. And finally, make sure you grab your seat uh, for the live class because I'm going to go deeper into how to take everything that I taught you here and put it into practice and create a clear plan and you eliminate all the obstacles like, you know, investing a lot of energy and feeling self-conscious about your pronunciation and not being able to use it in real life. All of that is going to be discussed in depth in the live class. So if you're on Instagram, write the word class to get a link to sign up. If you're on Facebook, you can also write the word class or send me a DM with the word class PM private message. And if you're on YouTube, you can just click on the link or just go to hadarshemish.com forward slash master class, master class. All right, my friends, um, I hope this was helpful. Remember, sheep ship, bed bad, pool pull, sell sales, and that's it. We talked about consonants as well. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you for being here today and I'll see you tomorrow.